I want to let everyone know that this is not a typical story. While people get scammed by fakes, this situation had taken on an entire new meaning. This is my story. I've been divorced for a little over four years and decided it was time for me to give online dating a try. I wasn't much for cocktail bars or going to overpriced restaurants to sit and find out the person I was on a date with just didn't connect with me and I wanted to go home. Plus, with my job I was always busy, often working late nights and early mornings. I had no children from my marriage and at 43 I was over the dream or prospect of having any kids and basically focused on my career, saving money, paying bills and getting by in life. It was in 2018 when I met Brian Martson. I was a paid member of eHarmony, and while I actually did meet a couple of guys for coffee in person that lived locally, there wasn't really a connection with them. I had spent a week or two talking to somebody online and then would meet them for coffee, but still didn't have that mental or physical connection that I was looking for. I had about given up when Brian messaged me. He too was a paid member, and he said he liked my profile and would like to get to know me if possible. I wished I had ran, knowing what I know now, back then, but instead I replied to his message. I messaged him back and said sure, while checking over his profile pics, additional photos, and his about section. He was in real estate, and I at the time was a bank manager and moving up to become a divisional manager. He wrote me a lengthy message saying he's single. His wife died three years ago, and he had no children. He said his wife had a battle with brain cancer, even giving me the medical terminology for her disease, and said he gave his all to care for her, but she passed. He said he stayed single, and then a friend told him about eHarmony and encouraged him to join. We chatted for a bit on the site, I want to say a little over a week before he asked for my phone number, and asked me if I had any chat apps. Well, I had WhatsApp because I use it to call my family and friends overseas, as a lot of my family and friends are still in the Philippines, which is where we all originally came from in my family. I added him on WhatsApp. He had a Florida number, and at the time I lived in Texas. While ideally I wanted to meet someone locally, I enjoyed his conversation and thought, if anything, maybe get to know him better and see where things lead. I've often went to Florida for vacation, and it's not that far flying. So, should we decide to meet, it would be easy. We chatted about life, family, our favorite meals, music. Keep in mind, everything he said was normal. I knew some about online scams and love scams. So, I was always looking out for those red flags. He had no grammar errors. I checked his photos and nothing came up in Google search. And his story remained the same. His likes, dislikes, everything matched with someone who would be from the USA and who lived in Florida. He had no story about a foreign family, no story of foreign parents, he wasn't raised in another country, he wasn't in a boarding school, and he didn't work somewhere far away like Malaysia. The first week when we talked on WhatsApp, he sent me photos of himself at work. He also sent profiles of his car, photos of his home, things he knew about Florida, the time, the weather, everything. All of his photos on his eHarmony profile matched the photos he also sent me in chat, including some extra ones that I hadn't seen. So, we hear scam victims say that he would call in the middle of the night or make spelling or grammatical errors. This never happened. He chatted with me in the evenings, and after about a week or so, I decided I would talk more to him. I wanted to call him on the phone. The first time he didn't answer, and he said he was working late and asked if he could call me some other evening, maybe tomorrow evening. Okay, I thought that's normal. We we're both busy working professionals. The next afternoon, he messaged me, asking for verification that I would phone him at 7 p.m. his time, which was 6 p.m. my time. I was fine with that, but I found it odd that he kept asking me to confirm I would call him during that specific time. I thought maybe he was a control freak, or maybe years of business, and he has that mindset to confirm stuff or make appointments. I assured him, yes, I would call him at 7 p.m. sharp his time. 7 p.m. came, and sure enough, I called no answer. I left him a voicemail and also asked him for a message saying when I could call him back. Nothing. So, at 7.30 p.m. his time, I called again. This time, the phone rang one long ring before he picked up. He said he was busy when I called the first time, and fair enough. His voice sounded normal, 
matched the photos, to be honest, or at least he had no weird accent, no broken English, and talked and sounded like an American man. We chatted for about an hour, laughing, talking, and looking back, I missed a few red flags. When we talked, I asked about his car, the one he sent uh, the photo of, and he responded with a different type of car and color. Also, when I asked about work, he said the construction business was very busy building roads and bridges, but he had told me he was in real estate. At the time, I was just so into his personality and it made me laugh that it didn't click to look into these red flags, but I wish I had. We talked about some basic stuff, the same as like we did in text, favorite food, music, movies, etc. These conversations went on for weeks, mostly in text, but when I wanted to call him, he would make sure that I give him a time that I was going to call. For a while, I thought maybe this guy is married, and he doesn't want me to find out. He schedules times for me to call. A person who had nothing to hide would do that, would they? I confronted him one night about this as he only had me call at certain times, and we got into an argument, and I finally said, that's it. Video chat with me, and I hit the video button on the app. To my surprise, he answered, and he was the guy in the photo. He walked around his home, showing me that no one else was there. I felt like such an idiot. He was who he said he was, or at least at the time I thought so. He continued, and it felt like a blooming romance, an online relationship. We talked about meeting, and I told him in June, four months after we first started talking, that I could meet him in Florida, that if he wanted to meet up with me, I was going to fly out there for a little vacation getaway. He said he was working a lot and wasn't sure if he could get the time off, and I found this odd as we had some very close conversations, and he actually told me that he loved me. We even shared adult pictures, and yes, I even sent him some nude photos one night as we were talking romantically, but I thought I was in a genuine online relationship. I told him I wanted something more than online, and I think meeting should be our next step. He then asked me how I planned to fly out, and if I'd gotten my ticket yet. I told him I had planned to purchase my ticket and hotel near the Orlando Resort, and that I was planning on going to Universal Studios as part of my vacation. He said he lived about 45 minutes from Orlando, so I figured he would jump at the chance for us to meet. He then said he could meet me. But he asked me how much my ticket and stay at the resort would cost, and I told him around $1,500 for everything, and he insisted that he could get everything cheaper for me, and asked if I wanted his help in booking it. Brian told me he knew people who worked for the airline and did travel packages, travel agents. He quoted me $1,000 for the entire trip from his so-called friend. I thought to myself, wow, that's a $500 savings. I can't pass that up. I never expected this. So I asked him, how can we do this? He told me that I could either wire him the money for the trip and he could book it, or I could just charge it on my credit card, but he would have to buy the package as he's getting it through his friend if I wanted to give him my credit card information. I was hesitant with both. I told him that maybe I'll just do it myself, and again, he tempted me with that $500 savings. He said that he would have to book it soon or he'd lose the special hotel rate. So, stupidly, I gave him my debit card information, front and back, name, PIN number, everything, you name it. There was no doubts in who he was. I video chatted. I phoned him. He said he wanted to be with me. He said he loved me. He was the man in the video. The next night after work, he sent me a confirmation email for my flight and a printout for the ticket and confirmation for the resort booking. Everything looked legit. As we made plans, we grew closer. I was excited and I had feelings for him. Yes, it was turning to love. The day of my flight, I checked the number on the confirmation email and called that number on the email to make sure all was okay. I reached a customer service person for the airline, and sure enough, he confirmed my flights. I couldn't contain my excitement. Meeting this man that I've been chatting to all this time and getting away from home, getting away from work, it was so awesome. I made my way to the airport and was dropped off by a cab. As I stood at the check-in, I was telling Brian, messaging him, that I was at the airport, but he didn't answer. I figured maybe he was working, maybe he was busy getting ready for us to meet. When I got to the ticket counter, they scanned the barcode from the email, and nothing came up. I was not booked on any flights. I told them it must be a mistake, and they told me no one by my name is booked on this flight, and that the printout is not correct for their airline. 
The check-in lady called her manager who also checked and confirmed this is not a legit booking voucher or email from their airlines. The number for the airline on the voucher was not correct. When I tried calling it, I got a message from Google Voice. They told me it looks like I've been scammed. And I got the information from a scam website or vacation site. I explained to them what happened and how I ended up getting this ticket, and they urged me to call the police as I had been scammed. I was angry and pissed off and felt so stupid. Here I was, sitting in an airport, luggage packed, time off work, and no ticket. I tried and tried to contact Brian, but he wouldn't answer his WhatsApp. He looks to have blocked me on eHarmony as I couldn't see his profile or it was taken down. I tried getting in touch, but nothing. I went home, filed a police report the next day, and sat there fuming. As the days went on, I didn't hear from him. I accepted I was scammed, but damn, I was angry. That's when the horror of my actions came to slap me back in the face. I got a text alert on my phone from my bank asking me if I've made some purchases recently. Several were online Western Union transactions and gift card purchases. I called the bank and confirmed with them that I did not make these transactions. To my horror, there were charges on my account and my entire checking was gone. Now, I'm not wealthy, but I had a few thousand dollars in my account and my paycheck had just hit the day before my trip direct deposit. I made my way to the bank to sort this. When logged into the account online at the bank, the teller showed me the transactions from Western Union using my credit card. Money sent from Brian Martson to a man in Ghana that I had never heard of. Purchases of gift cards as well as shoes and other goods via Amazon. I've never bought any of these things, and I was urged to file a second police report about this. The bank was able to close out my debit card and get me a new number. I filed a police report again, and they said there was not much they could do. I called Western Union and filed a fraud case, and they were able to give the police the information about Brian Martson and this man in Ghana. Thousands of dollars, he wired. Otherwise, there's not much that can be done. I felt helpless. I went online searching his photos. Who was I talking to? I searched for the man's name in Ghana that Brian sent the money to and found his Facebook profile as his name was quite unique. I then found a few scammer groups run by scammers and that's when I came across the real Brian Martson. Oh yes, he was a real person. He lived in Florida and he was in the same group as this man from Ghana who he sent the money to. Brian was offering his services to collect Western Union's video and voice chat and assist scammers with their scam for a cut of money. My mouth dropped open when I saw this as he was like a businessman offering his services to assist scammers. I copied his profile link, screenshot his post, and gave it to the police, who filed it with my case. I searched this Brian, and he was married. He had kids. He had been in these scammer groups for years, postings all over offering his services. This is who I video chatted with. He worked with scammers. So when I wanted to video chat or call, he always made me schedule. I think I was talking to the man in Ghana online and in text, but when it came to video chat and voice chat, Brian stepped in, which is why he messed up on the make of the car and just little little things that he mentioned in the chat that didn't match up when he video called. Yes, people actually work for scammers. I was enraged. I messaged Brian, telling him I knew what he was and I'd vow to put him in jail. And of course, he blocked me on social media. Pretty soon I was getting messages on Facebook from all sorts of fake profiles. I closed my eHarmony profile and was done with it all. Lesson learned. Yes, I made a big mistake by giving him my credit card debit details. I own my mistake. But the fact that there are Americans working for scammers like some kind of sick job, and I'm sure people in other countries do this as well, is enough to make you angry and sick. My advice to you, don't be fooled by a video chat. Be careful who you talk to and never give your personal financial details or debit card number, credit card, or bank info, no matter how legit they seem and no matter how many times you video chat. That is my story, and thank you for listening. And we'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. If you'd like your story narrated into a video, you can find us on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action. You can tell your story, you can remain anonymous, and we will convert it into a narrated video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye.